Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another week here on TCGplayer.com. I am Conley Woods. Today, we're going to be bringing you two different decks, uh, kind of quick looks into both of them, so probably just a couple matches with each. Uh, the first deck is a spin on the uh, Traverse the Ovenwall deck that I was working on last week. Last week, I looked at a Jun deck. Uh, this week I wanted to specifically add Kiora, Master of the Depths, uh, to the list, which changes things quite a bit. So first of all, we're obviously adding a Planeswalker to the list, which diversifies our permanent types a little bit for, uh, Traverse. However, in order to add Kiora, I ended up cutting, um, uh, Oath of Nyssa, which cut enchantments, so that kind of lowered it. Although I would say that Kiora in general is just going to be a better Delirium and Enabler. Not only, uh, is she a Planeswalker, but... Her mind is two ability, looks at four cards, and puts some number of them into the graveyard, which is going to help enable Delirium. Um, <coughs> so in general, I would say that Cure is a little bit better there. Uh, Cure also kind of gives us that Oath of Nyssa um, kind of tutor ability. Uh, we get to go four cards deep instead of three, although obviously we're spending a lot more mana. But we, we have the same, like, added um, kind of... Kind of fetch or filtering that we had with Ozanissa in Cura. So even though we lost it, we still have a, quite a bit of ways to find all of our one ofs. Uh, obviously the main way would be casting Traverse with uh, Delirium, but Cura is a pretty good backup to that. Um, most of these cards were in the last list, so this, I'm going to focus mostly on the uh, the key differences. So in the lands, we get added a Plagued Cataract, which you can tutor for uh, as a draw card in the late game. Usually you're going to grab Get Rog Monster first or something along that those lines, but uh, Blighted Cataract is kind of like a, a good backup. Still the Blighted Fern. Uh, we added four Lumbering Falls. So now we have four Hissing Quagmire and four Lumbering Falls. Gives us a lot of reach against control. Um, obviously just a ton of creatures, creature lands all around. We went, up, we went up a land actually as a result, went up to 25. Partially because we lost those from Nyssa and partially because of more creature lands. Um, having eight of these in the deck does make me want to consider adding a Sylvan Advocate as a one of. Um, at some point, just because being able to tutor that up and uh, pump up all your creature lands plus two plus two seems like something we might want, so that's that's something to pay attention to in today's games. Um, we already had the Westville Abbey. Yep, everything else is pretty normal in the lands. Creature-wise, we added a Harbinger of the Tides as a little way to go tutor up something, bounce a creature. Uh, it's decent against aggro. I just played early on and deal with a, an attacking threat and then trade away for something else. Uh, so it's a reasonable just card to grab on the fly, especially if you're tied on mana. Uh, Fathom Feeder, another Death Touch creature, so it's kind of a removal spell, but uh, main main reason to grab this is obviously to draw cards with it. Um, the Ingest does not actually get used in our deck, but uh, I've considered adding stuff that takes advantage of it, like um, uh, the two three fire that counters the spell. What the heck is his name? I don't remember his name. But uh, yeah, mostly in here is like a, a cheap death type creature that then draws cards in late game. Um, swapped out the Silmgar Assassin for Kindly Stranger. Uh, the idea being that this deck is going to be better at getting Delirium and uh, getting a two three up front instead of a two two, and then uh, a four three on the back end that kills anything as opposed to just small things. We're both upgrades, so gonna try her out. Um, Anything else new there? Nope. The four Kiora. One Profaner of the Dead. This is one I'm pretty excited by. Just the art alone. It looks like straight out of the video game. Uh, mostly in here to deal with token decks and aggressive decks. The idea being you tutor this up uh, and you go sacrifice your hanger back walker. Or, you know, you could sacrifice itself, obviously. Uh, but anything anything with a reasonable amount of toughness. And uh, you... You bounce all your opponent's creatures, reset them, buy yourself a bunch of time, kill all the tokens, which is a pretty strong uh, ability to have, uh, especially with all the different token strategies running around, or st strategies that use tokens, at least. So this is a card I'm kind of interested to uh, to see how it plays out. One Kalidus in the main deck, uh, move the other two to the sideboard. One Mind Rack Demon, uh, mostly in here as a Delirium Enabler, uh, so it doesn't actually work as something you can grab off Traverse, because Traverse, if you're grabbing it off Traverse, you already have Delirium. That said... Uh, a 4-5 Flying Trample uh, for 4 mana is hardly ever bad, so I just wanted to give it a shot as a 1 of. Um, Icefall Regions new. Pretty self-explanatory why it's in here. Just creature removal to be tutored. A little more reliable than uh, Harbinger of the Tides in terms of dealing with something permanently. 
Uh, Altered Ego. This one I'm pretty excited about. Obviously, having an uncounterable uh, threat to grab just adds a ton to traverse against decks like Esper Dragons and whatnot. Uh, but there's also just a lot of cool interactions with the paying of X in this deck. Whether you're casting a big Hangerback Walker, um, you know, Hangerback Walker, the first, so the first four mana, you get nothing out of your Hangerback Walker. But then X scales at a rate of 1 per X as opposed to 2X per 1. So at 8 mana, you break even. Uh, end up with a 4-4, but then every man after that you do get a bigger hanger back walker, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, mostly just like, just getting a big dude that, that resets something like a Thought Nazi or activation, or even the mind rack demons occasionally. Um, but yeah, just a pretty sweet card to have in here as a one-off. Usually, uh, our opponent's creatures are going to be the, the most exciting targets to actually get, so we'll pay attention to that. Uh, Uvenwald Hydra I kept, mostly because we added, actually added some additional lands between the Lumbering Falls and the Blighted Cataract that I would be interested in grabbing. Uh, one Silmgar, Dragonlord Silmgar, uh, deal with Planeswalkers. He allows me to not play the third route in his path from the main deck, although that's something we do want to consider adding. And then I cut the uh, the Tark, obviously, so the only 7-drop we have is Worldbreaker. So our curve got cut a little bit, which also helped me justify um, the new mana base, which is 25 lands, so plus 1 lands, but minus 4 to Oath of Nissa. Uh, everything else in the main deck is the same. Over here in the sideboard, uh, we have Sidisi's Faithful as a card to grab against uh, aggro. I don't know if it's worthy of the sideboard slot, but I'm trying it. Uh, Stitchwing Scabbard's Control, just an uncountable kind of recursive threat. Uh, Reality Smasher, aggressive, hard to deal with threat. Same for Guy's Revenge. The one Conclave Naturalists. Uh, two Duress, two Pick the Brain, which is what I had before. One Minister of Pain, along with two Languish against Aggro, and then uh, two Kalidus also to help out against Aggro, and then one Ruinous Path kind of comes in against anything with a lot of Planeswalkers. Um, yeah, that's the deck. We're just going to, like I said, play a couple matches, and then we're going to swap over to a, a different Spicy Brew I have, uh, or an update to a Spicy Brew, I should say. Uh, so stick around. We'll be right back. Conley Woods, TCGplayer.com. See you shortly.